Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. The day we've been waiting for has finally arrived. Radio Master just released a whole slew of Express LRS receivers, and they've got you covered from a basic four channel all the way up to a full telemetry Vario eight channel. Before I get into the content, I do need to let you know this video is sponsored by Radio Master, who sent me these receivers for review. I'll have links in the description if you'd like to pick some of these up for yourself. They are affiliate links, so if you use them, just be aware the channel gets a little bit of a kickback, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. I'd like to say thanks to Radio Master for including me in the review process. As many of you know, I've been in the process of converting my entire hangar of aircraft over to Express LRS. I'm almost completely there, and I'll be finishing the job up with the Radio Master receivers you see in front of you. And one of them's already been flying for a couple weeks already. First thing we'll do is we'll go through the lineup and I'll give you a look at what they've released and then we'll talk about the individual receivers to give you an idea what the capabilities are and what the specs are. The first receiver we'll check out is the ER4. It's a traditional PWM four channel receiver with a single whisker antenna on the back. And one of the really cool features on all of the receivers that support telemetry is it provides VBAT up to 35 volts on a single wire. I think that's just awesome. You do have to solder it on. There is a pin right here that says EXT-V. So you will have to solder the wire on. Fortunately, Radio Master includes the wire and a little extra heat shrink so you can cut this heat shrink off, solder your VBAT wire on, and then reheat shrink so you have everything you need. You just have to connect the wire right there on that external pad. Very simple operation to do that, and you'll be up and running with VBAT on this receiver. Another very cool feature about all the Radio Master Express LRS receivers is they support DC input up to 8.4 volts. I simply can't give enough of a thumbs up for that because if you're flying an airplane that's got servos that can take advantage of 8.4 volts, it's really nice to be able to plug them into the same power supply if you want. Of course, some of you will say, well, you gotta have redundant power, that's fine. But the idea is that you can go up to 8.4 volts if you want. And I think that's just amazing. These receivers all come with a version of Express LRS 3.2 pre-installed. We will expect to see Express LRS production versions of firmware in 3.3, and 3.3 Release Candidate 1 is already out. So when they get to the final release version of 3.3, we should see production versions of firmware for all of these receivers. So there's the ER4. Perfect for a part flyer or profile foamy like my Twisted Hobbies Edge. That's where this one's been employed for the past two weeks. And it's been fantastic. I haven't had a single issue with it. I love it. All right, next up is the ER6. And I know there's going to be a lot of happy people when they see this one. This is a traditional six-channel Express LRS PWM output receiver. Two whisker antennas, six output pins. There's a battery pin on the bottom, so if you wanna bring voltage in on this last pin, you can do that. You don't have to eat up one of these ports if you're using, say, an external BEC. And keep in mind, on Express LRS, channel five is still used for arming, although in PWM versions of Express LRS, you can remap channel five pin to something else. So you can set channel five to, say, channel six, and you could set channel six to channel seven if you want. So that way, from your radio, you would output channels one, two, three, four, six and seven. So you don't actually lose the physical pin. You can actually still get a full six channels of PWM out. You simply do a remap so you don't use channel five for anything other than an arm to the receiver. Another thing that they did is they included a VBAT wire on this one and it just got this little JST style connector and that plugs in right here on the bottom. So there's a little connector right there on the bottom and this JST adapter plugs in, you'll notice there isn't even a ground for that. All you need to do is connect this VBAT lead to your battery source. It can be your mains, it can be a balance lead, whatever makes you happy, that, but that's all you gotta do. One single lead back to your pack and you're good to go. You will probably have to go into your telemetry and do an offset and calibrate with a multimeter to make sure that the telemetry voltage value is reporting correctly. So do calibrate it with your multimeter, but single wire VBAT, I just love this. By the way, that is now a flat out requirement for every electric plane I fly. I no longer equip airplanes to fly unless I get VBAT and Radio Master delivered all the way up to 35 volts. They also include a UART on the back. So there's a minus plus RX and TX, and they include a connector to plug into that port. 
this port is reserved for future expansion. So you can do things like at a later date, you'll be able to add a GPS or a current sensor or a combined current and voltage sensor. But that's the idea. It's the traditional UART based connectivity on the back of the receiver to add external sensors. As of today, it's not used, but be on the lookout. I'm sure Radio Master has plans to deliver sensors that will work fantastic with these Express LRS receivers. Next up is the big boy. This is the ER8, and everything about the ER8 is the same, except you get two more PWM outputs. You still have 35 volts of VBAT in. You can still support 8.4 volts of voltage in. You've got two whisker antennas. The only thing that's different is it's a little bit heavier, and you've got two more pins on the back, so eight channels. Really cool for stuff like a jet, if you've got landing gear and flaps that you wanna use or any other application where you might be using a channel. Spoilerons, flapperons, any of those configurations will now work because we've got eight channels of PWM output on Express LRS. Okay, that covers the standard PWM range. We've got the ER4, the ER6, and the ER8. So you've got four channel, six channel, and eight channel. Standard PWM, everything's good there. That's the standard lineup. Next, we'll take a look at the G-Series. The G-Series are meant for gliders, and you'll note that there's two versions of eight. You've got an 8G and an 8GV, and then you've got the 6G and the 6GV. The only difference is the red G version is no Vario built into this one. The G receivers are meant for competition gliders. That's why you would get the 8G or the 6G. If you want a glider based receiver with the Vario, you'd go for the 8GV for an eight channel with Vario or the 6GV for a six channel with the Vario. And by the way, this is the same exact type of receiver that I used in my crash proof plane setup. So now we can go out and get Radio Master complete receivers ready to go, all the pins are there, and we've got a Vario. So if you wanna build a crash proof plane setup, you can follow my video and use one of these receivers to do it. First up is the ER6G. Now this one has a little bit of a caveat. You've got channels one, two, three, four, five on this side, and then channel six is right here on the back, but notice there are no pins. So if you want channel six, Radio Master includes a 90 degree three pin header that you'll have to solder into the board. You'll have to move the whisker antenna out of the way, solder it in, and they do include heat shrink so you can reheat shrink it. And while you're in there, you can also solder on your VBAT lead. You do have VBAT detection on this one, again, up to 35 volts, and the input power is up to 8.4 volts. The range on all of these is 3.5 to 8.4, so 8.4 on the high end. Okay, that's the 6G. Remember, the 6G is intended for gliders, but it does support VBAT, no Vario on the 6G. Next up is the 8G. The 8G is encased in a wrapper. It's like one of these plastic wrappers that is not a hard case. And you do have eight channels on this one. Channels one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, and eight, and a battery input on the backside. So you do have all eight channels on this one ready to go. And they do include a VBAT pin and some heat shrink in there. So if you wanna get in there and solder on the VBAT lead, you can do that as well. But there's the ER8G. Remember, 8G, no Vario. The AG also includes the UART cable, so that tells me there's a UART port in there somewhere. It's not visible on the back side, you can't see it on either end, but there's going to be a UART connection in there because they have the jumper in there, okay? All right, that covers the competition glider receivers, so 8G and 6G, remember, no Vario on those. The final two receivers are the ER6GV and the ER8GV. Everything about these is gonna be identical to the competition versions with the exception, these have the Vario built in. Here's a look at the 6GV and you can see it's got Vario written right there on the bottom and same deal, you've got five channels on the left hand side and one channel number six on the back side. Same deal as on the 6G, you'll have to solder your pins in and if you want the VBAT lead, you can attach that as well and they include the heat shrink. So everything you need to make that adjustment if you need that six channel. And it's purple instead of red, <laughs> but whatever. This is the type of receiver that I will be using in my crash proof setups. This is going in my next plane. I have a plane on the way, this one is going in there. It's gonna be part of my next crash proof setup. Thank you very much, Radio Master. Great timing on this one.
The final receiver is the ERHEV. Same deal as the ER8G, except this one's got the Vario. You've got five channels on the left-hand side, three channels on this side. If you want the VBAT or UART, you are gonna have to take the casing off and solder them in. So they include the UART jumper cable and the VBAT wire in the packaging, and they also include an additional heat shrink. So if you do take the cover off, you'll be able to use the heat shrink and get it back on and make it look just like it came out of the factory. I'm not sure in this receiver where that UART connection is, but they do include the UART jumper cable, so I'm just gonna assume that there's one in there. Next up, we'll get the ER8 out, bind it to the radio, and take a look at the sensors and the telemetry data that comes back from the receiver. All right, I've got the radio powered on, and I've been saving one last little trick Radio Master has up its sleeve with how battery voltage is reported on these devices. So here's what we're gonna do. I've got a battery connected to an ESC, so an ESC, and the ESC will put five volts out on this wire, and my balance lead right there should measure somewhere around 11 and change on voltage. So I'm gonna connect the VBAT lead to that red wire on the balance port so you can see the voltage. But if you don't use the VBAT, the receiver reports the voltage coming in on your BEC wire, which I think is really cool, and it'll toggle back and forth. So if you have no VBAT, it simply shows you the voltage coming in from your BEC. In other words, on the voltage rail of the receiver, if you do use VBAT, it switches over to that one automatically, and it'll go back and forth. It's really cool, check this out. First thing I'll do is connect the receiver, and I'm just gonna pick an open port. I normally put my throttle or my BEC on channel three, so I'll just do that out of habit. One caveat regarding the Express LRS setup, because they don't have the firmware released yet, that means you can't compile and add your binding phrase. So the way you're gonna do that is turn the receiver on, let it go into AP mode, connect to Express LRS RX, and then open up the web UI 10.0.0.1 in your browser and put your binding phrase in. And they are running version 3.2 of Express LRS. So you'll need a 3.x version of Express LRS on your transmitter. Now, I've already gone into the web browser on this one and set my binding phrase, which is why I have a bind. And when you do get a bind, you get a solid blue. And you can see I have telemetry here on my radio. I mentioned earlier in the video that you need to calibrate your voltage sensor, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the number that we see on the screen right here, RxBat at 5.5 volts, that's reporting the BEC voltage on the rail on the receiver right here. Here's my VBAT lead, and that's not connected to anything. So that means we're getting telemetry on the receiver input voltage, okay? Now what I wanna do is check that voltage with my multimeter. The way I'm gonna do that is I've got a pigtail with the bare ends right here. I've got plus and minus. So I'm just gonna plug this into the receiver. Remember, it's a common voltage and common ground, so any, any pin I want, I can use. And then I'll bring my multimeter in, and I'm just gonna put my probes on the hot and ground wire and take a look at what the multimeter says. So I'm seeing 5.54 volts. That looks pretty good to me, and no, I did not calibrate this. This is the way it came out of the factory. So that makes me happy. I'm good with that number. Now, the next thing we wanna do is take our VBAT lead and connect it to the positive lead on our balance plug on the battery. And we're only doing this to calibrate. You can connect it however you want. I'm just doing this to give you a demonstration on how to calibrate. So right now we see 5.5 volts on the screen. I'm gonna take my VBAT lead and put it on the positive side of the battery. And when I do that, you'll see the voltage over here jump up to 11.3 volts. And if I remove the VBAT lead from the battery, it's gonna go back down to 5.5. Pretty cool, right? So touch the VBAT lead, we jumped up to 11.3, remove the VBAT lead, and we're down to 5.5. It just automatically toggles back and forth, which I think is really cool. Now, let's check this battery voltage with my ISDT backgo checker. I'm just gonna plug this in and we'll see what we've got here. All right, I've got the battery plugged in and I'm showing 11.36 on the backgo checker and we were seeing 11.3 on the telemetry on the radio. So that's really good. But I, So I don't technically have to calibrate mine. It looks good enough for my use, but I do wanna show you how to do it. So I'm gonna connect the VBAT lead again one more time and there's your RX bat. Let me show you how to do the calibration anyway. We'll hit the model button and then I'm gonna hit the telemetry button and we're gonna scroll down to RX bat and there it is 11.3 volts if you edit that you can come down to offset and change it so you see that I've got the reading right here at the top 11.3 volts if I need to adjust it say bring it up I simply click on that field and scroll to the right and all that does is kind of calibrates what the radius is receiving from the sensor to the actual voltage so you can see now it was reading 11 well I lost my connection there 
So it's reading 11.6, but I know mine is at 11.3. So I'm just going to set that back down to zero. So if you do need to calibrate, that's how you do it. One other cool little trick, if you want to know how to do it, you can increase the precision on these as well by clicking this drop down and setting it to two zeros after the decimal. And now you can see I'm reading 11.3 volts. So if I wanted to dial that in to be 11.33, I could go into that offset and add just a click or two, and that will bring my voltage up to be very, very close to what my back go checker read. All right, that's it for calibration. The last thing we'll do is take a look at the sensors. So you've got one RSS and two RSS. Remember, that's because we have dual antennas. So you've got RSS signal from both, RSS one for antenna one and RSS two for antenna two. We've got RQLY at 100%. This one tells you what antenna you're on. So that's flashing number one. That means we're using antenna number one for our communications. We're in RF mode number four, which is a reference to how Express LRS is set up. There's my T power, which, my, which is my transmit power. I do use dynamic power, so it's at 25 milliwatts, which is low. We've got TRSS at negative four decibels. We've got TQLY, TSNR, RxBat, there's our voltage sensor. You'll see current and capacity and battery percent. That's it for telemetry on the ER8. Remember, all of the other ER Red series, the ER4, ER6, ER6G, and ER8G will have the same telemetry. The ER6GV and ER8GV will add vertical speed and your altimeter. A quick side note on all of these receivers, if you've got the JST plug-in style wire for VBAT and you choose not to use VBAT, you simply leave it disconnected and the receiver will operate fine. You don't have to have it connected if you don't want the voltage. You know we had to do this, right? We've got glider receivers, so we have to weigh them. And I know for those of you who are flying really small planes that are interested in these postage stamp size, weight's a concern. The book on this ER4 says three grams. I'm gonna drop it on the scale and we'll see what the scale says. All right, I come in at two grams, so good job, Radio Master. You didn't over-index. I like that. Next up is the ER6, and the book for the ER6 says 15.2 grams. We'll drop that in there, and I'm reading 14 grams, so we're good there. The next receiver will be the ER6G. That one is right here, and the book on this one says five grams. We'll go ahead and drop that on there, and I see five grams, so good to go. The ER6GV is next up, and the weight on this one is supposed to be 10.5 grams. And I am seeing only four. So that looks like a typo on the book, I think. So four grams for the ER6GV. Let's just check the ER6 again just to see if we're close. Yeah, five grams for that one. And it looks like the one with the Vario is actually, okay, it's also five grams. So about five grams for those two. All right, uh, I think you got a typo there, Radio Master. ER8 is up next, and that one, the book says this is 17.5 grams. So drop that in there, and I'm showing 15 grams. Very good. And the ER8G, that's, remember, the competition one, no Vario on this one. The book for this one says 10.5 grams. Uh-oh, that one's a porker. That came in at 11, <laughs> so we rounded up, but still pretty close. I think good job. <laughs> good job. And then ER8GV, this one says 10.5 grams. We'll set that on there. And uh-oh, another porker. Let's, let's give it a chance. We'll reweigh it. All right, 12 grams. So that one's just a little bit off. They said 10.5 in the book, and I'm showing 12 grams, which is probably a rounding error with a, with a scale that's never been calibrated. We'll wrap this video up by answering the question I know everybody's going to be asking, and that's how much. All prices are going to be in U.S. dollars, and this is as of launch date. The ER4 is going to release at $14.99, so four-channel PWM Express LRS receiver with VBAT, 35 volts, and 8.4 at $14.99. Seems like a pretty good deal to me. The ER6, this one's going to release at $24.99, and remember, everything is soldered and you get a hard case traditional receiver. So $24.99 for a six-channel Express LRS. That's right in there as far as I'm concerned. I like the sound of that. The ER6G is going to come in at $29.99. No Vario on that one. The ER6GV, that's with the Vario, is going to come in at $34.99. The ER8, that's the big one, that's $34.99. The ER8G, same price, $34.99. And the ER8GV, that's the most expensive one in the lineup, at $39.99. Links for all of these will be in the description. So if you want to buy one for yourself, I'd appreciate it if you use my affiliate links. 
Radio Master, great job. I think you guys hit the cover off the ball. You hit all the key points that I think a modern receiver needs to have. You've got the best firmware. You've got VBAT up to 35 volts, 8.4 volts in, and you've got a wide range of selection from a little postage stamp four channel all the way up to a Mac Daddy ER8 GV with the Vario and vertical speed. Awesome job. I can't wait to see how these work out in the field. I hope you liked my video on the new Radio Master Express LRS receiver lineup. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know a new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you just about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and get out there and fly something.